A few weeks back, Robinhood hosted their first ever keynote event with a number of new product launches. This included the addition of joint brokerage accounts, futures trading, and a few other small updates. But the main new product that stole the show is Robinhood Legend. This is a brand new desktop trading platform from Robinhood with real-time data, customizable charts, and advanced trading tools. For years now, Robinhood has been criticized for having a user interface that is beginner-friendly, but is far too basic for intermediate to advanced traders. Well, Robinhood Legend is their direct response to this criticism, and they have been quietly working on this project behind the scenes for over two years now. So we're going to be diving into a beginner's tutorial on this Robinhood Legend desktop trading platform in this video. Robinhood Legend is available to anyone who has a brokerage account once it is fully launched, so you don't need to have Robinhood Gold or anything like that. Now guys, if you're excited about Robinhood Legend, do me a favor and drop a like on this video as well as subscribe subscribe and hit the bell for the YouTube algorithm. Now you can skip ahead at any time using the table of contents down below, but for now I want to cover how to access Robinhood Legend from your desktop or laptop computer. Now if you don't have a Robinhood account just yet, you're going to want to visit ryanoscribner.com slash Robinhood and create a free account. By using my affiliate link, you're going to get a free stock worth up to $200. This free fractional share investment bonus is going to be from a list of 20 leading American companies and you actually get to choose which free stock you get. So click the link down in the description below to get your free stock from Robinhood today. And I'm also going to put my full Robinhood tutorial in the corner for later. The next step here is to visit Robinhood.com legend, and you'll be able to use the platform. Here we are now looking at the Robinhood legend platform. And based on first impressions, the user experience here is fantastic. There are some really cool sounds and visuals that are built in, and you'll definitely appreciate them if you're using something like a MacBook Pro, for example. Now, by default here on the main screen, you're going to be looking at an untitled layout. Robinhood Legend has a modular design, and that means that you can build and customize it however you want it. You could even do six plus monitors if you wanted to, adding all of these different widgets for whatever you were looking to add for your particular trading view. Now, we are going to build one of these custom layouts together later on, but it's a little bit confusing if you are a complete beginner. So the first thing I want to start with here is showing you the pre-built Robinhood layout. What you're going to want to do is click on the plus icon in the top left. This gives you the option to either start from scratch or start from template. We're going to click on start from template. And this brings up the eight different templates that Robinhood has for you based on different goals or trading strategies. But for starters here, we're going to take a look at market tracker. So we're going to click on that template. This is going to bring up the eight most actively traded stocks on Robinhood right now. So in this case, we have Tesla, Ford, Amazon, Google, Neo. Disney, Meta, and then Lucid Motors. And we have a candlestick chart here for each of these stocks. So right now we are getting real-time data on every single one of these stocks, updating every second or so. Now by default here, looking at something like Tesla, we have it set to a one-day time horizon and a five-minute time interval. Now, if you don't know what these charts are whatsoever, you should check out a lesson on technical stock analysis before you actually place trades on Robinhood Legend because you really need to learn about charting here but you could just play around in the platform and learn as you go, as long as you're not executing actual trades. And I'm going to be showing you executing trades later on. That way, you know exactly what it looks like. Now, one of the things you can do here, looking at each one of these charts is if you're hovered over a chart and you do a two finger drag, you can actually zoom in on that particular chart to get a tighter view. So I just did that here looking at Ford. We could also jump over to Tesla and do the same thing, zooming in and zooming out. Another feature you have up here is you can toggle between viewing the particular trading session, which shows that we're currently in market hours or your portfolio performance. So for example, with this demo Robinhood portfolio that I have, we're currently up 1.39% today. But let's take a look now again at Tesla stock, and we're going to look at changing the time interval here. What that's going to do is change the amount of time that each one of these candles represents. So if we change that, for example, to a one minute candle, we're going to see a lot more individual candlesticks because we're now getting one that is representing every single minute of trading. If you want to get as detailed as possible, you could look at one particular tick and you can see tick by tick here in real time exactly what Tesla stock is doing. We can also jump down here and change this to every 144 ticks. This is going to be giving us a very close view here of what's going on with Tesla stock. As you can see at the bottom, the time interval is between 1130 in the middle to 1145. So about half of the chart or a little bit less 
is representing just 15 minutes of time, giving you a very tight view here on what's happening with the particular stock. But for example, if you wanted a more zoomed out perspective on what's happening here, you could change this interval here to represent a four hour interval, for example, and then you could back this out here and look at the past week of activity. And this is showing you the last week here with Tesla stock. We could also back this up here and look at a month from this interval here. And that is going to be the candlestick chart performance here for Tesla. But let's say, for example, you aren't interested in candlestick charts and maybe you want something like a line chart. What you're going to do at that point is come up here and you can see where it mentions here chart types. If you click on this, you have popular types above like candles, line and bars. But you also have all of these other advanced chart types that honestly, I'm not even familiar with. But those who are advanced traders, for example, might actually be. So we're going to switch this over to a line chart now. And now we have a line chart of the exact same interval and time horizon. So let's go ahead now and change this back here to the past day. And we're going to be looking at an interval here of every five minutes once again on the line chart. But now we're going to add some technical indicators for those who are looking to conduct analysis at this point. So what you're going to do here is click on this little squiggly F and this is going to be your indicators. And at this point, you can add Add technical indicators to this particular chart. So it's going to show you a list of the most popular below. Let's say, for example, you wanted to do a simple moving average. You would click that here. By default, it's going to be the 50 day SMA, but you can click here. And let's say you wanted the 200 day simple moving average. You would just change it like that. And just like that, we've added this technical indicator here showing us the 50 day SMA. And if we also wanted to add, for example, the relative strength index, we could click on this here and add the RSI. And and that's now going to add this to our chart here. So if you wanted to customize a view here for every single one of these, you could. If you have a view in particular that you like, like let's say, for example, you wanted to repeat this across the board, you would go up here and you would now click on this folder icon here and you could save this as a new template. So if we called this default, for example, and then click on the checkbox at that point, if we come over here and click on the same button for indicators, we can load in our default view you and it's going to apply the same exact indicators from the previous one over to the next view here for Ford stock. But let's say, for example, Ford and Tesla and these other stocks are not the stocks you want to look at. If you want to change these, all you're going to do is click on the particular symbol here and then you could change that over. So let's say, for example, you wanted Netflix, you would type in the symbol here and there is Netflix stock. It's now going to change this to the same thing, but just for Netflix. And then let's say here, instead of Ford, you wanted to take a look at GM stock. So we're going to type in GM, click on that. And now it updates that view here for General Motors. So that's going to be it here for the market trader view. It's super helpful for looking at a lot of different stocks here at once and seeing what's going on. But if you want to look at one particular stock in more detail, or perhaps it's an ETF or whatever it may be, what you're going to do here is click on the X to get rid of a particular layout. And then from there, you're going to click on the plus icon once again, start from template. And now we're going to be taking a look at chart spotlight, which is going to be really good for looking at one particular asset at a time. By default, it's going to bring over whatever we were looking at previously. So in this case, it's Netflix stock. We're looking at a one day time horizon with a five minute interval. But if you want to change that and look at the last week, for example, we would click on that and that's going to bring up one week of data. Now the five minute interval is a little too tight here. So we're also going to want to change this and we're going to change this over to the four hour interval. That's actually going to be too few at that point. Point. So let's drop it over now to the 30 minutes. So at this point, it reflects exactly what we put in. But let's say you want to put in a trend line, for example, what you would do is click on the line tool up here. And these are all of the different lines that you can add. And again, a lot of these are advanced. But for a basic trend line, we're going to click here on that. And now you can start adding these drawings to your chart. Now, I am not anybody who is considered an expert or even an amateur in technical stock analysis. It's not something that I I do. I know some of the basics, but don't look at this as any kind of trading advice or anything like that. Watch a full video on technical stock analysis. We're going to click here to add the beginning of our trend line. And then let's just say we're going to move it all the way over to here and see where we have a couple of points of contact. So let's say we're going to put the trend line right about there. If you double click now, we have our trend line that we've added. So for example, we're seeing that uh, Netflix stock has bounced here off that trend line a couple of times and seems to be continuing continuing on a trend somewhere around this. Now, what's cool is once you add a trend line, you can do the same double finger zoom in and zoom out and 
look at a tighter view or a zoomed out view. And then the other thing I want to show you here as well is how to add indicators. Once you're done with the drawings, you should click on done here to close that out. But let's say you also wanted to add, for example, a RSI or SMA. We're going to click up here and let's just turn on once again our default view, the 14 day RSI and 50 day simple moving average. But let's say, for example, we want to make this the 200 day SMA. We can now adjust that. And then coming back to our chart, we can actually see how that 200 day simple moving average has been a support here at this point in time where the stock bounced off of that. And you can also see our trend line here, which caused some consolidation to take place here. And then we did have a breakout. Now, let's say, for example, you want to add a rectangle. You can click up here and add a rectangle. And then just like before, you would click over a section and then you would drag it over like that and release. And then you would click once again and it's going to create that rectangle for you. And then you can click on done. And just like before, you can zoom in and zoom out and create your drawings. And then if you wanted to also, for example, record notes, you can click here and add a text box. So for example, if you wanted to add something here and call this detail for later, something that you want to look at, you can add a text box and do all sorts of notes, drawings, etc., on the chart and add and remove indicators and even change the chart type as you please here. But let's say you want to have a nice clean look. Once again, you would click here on the gear and wrench where it says more and then click on delete either Netflix drawings or you could delete all drawings. So we're going to click on delete all drawings and it's going to bring us back here to just the indicators being on and nothing that we added on the screen. Now there's a bunch of other layout templates that you can play around with, but now we're going to change gears and create our own template from scratch. So what we're going to do here is click on untitled layout. Now, if you don't have this listed here, you're going to click on the plus icon. And if you want to get rid of one of these layouts, what you would do here is click on it and then click on the X in the corner and then you would click on delete layout. And if you need to add a new layout, once again, you click on plus and you can click on start from scratch. Now I already have an untitled from scratch layout, so I'm just going to delete that one here too. And then up top, if you double click it, you can name this. So I'm going to call this Ryan's trading view. Now, if you want to also work in full screen, you can click on this button right here and it's going to full screen your view. So that's also very handy. But what we're going to want to do for now is add some widgets. So we're going to click on the add widget button here. And these are the six options of what you can add. So the first thing we're going to add here is the full account summary. And that adds that for us here in the top left. Now, right from this widget, you can control your brokerage account. So for example, if we click on the deposit button here, it is going to change us to the standard desktop view, but it brings us right over to where we can initiate a deposit to our brokerage account. You can also click on this right here to make details hidden or public, which if somebody's live streaming, for example, they might want to do that. You can also click on the three lines here and customize details. For example, if you want to add the number of day trades you've placed, you can add that here. You can also add your trading P and L and see what your profit and loss has been. This is actually a new update that's also part of the new Robinhood features. But for now, what we're going to do is add another widget here and we're going to add recent orders. Now, this is going to show you any orders that you've placed over the last 24 hours. This is most likely going to be useful for somebody who's actively trading, which is not something I do in this demo account. So I don't have any orders to show here. But you can sort them by different criteria. You can also add filters and that kind of thing. And if you click on the three dots here, you can also customize what details are displayed up top here for each of the recent orders. We're going to click on add widget once again. And the next thing we're going to add here is a list of our positions. Now for any of these widgets, you can also hover over the corner and make them larger, which I think is convenient here for the view of our positions. This is going to bring up a list of the positions in my portfolio and you can click on the details here to sort. Right now it's an alphabetized view, but if we're looking for the ones with the largest open profit and loss um, sorted by profit, you can see that I have actually a 21% profit on my $1 fractional investment in Tesla. But if we look at the losers of my portfolio, I'm actually down about 40% on super micro computers, for example. So let's go ahead and buy a stock here from this view. Let's say we want to buy the dip here on super micro. You would click on the three dots here and then select increase position. And it brings up an order ticket window right here, which is pretty cool. At that point, we can make 
a fractional investment, we have $1 of buying power available. We can do a market buy in dollars and buy another 0.03714 shares of this stock. You would just then click on buy SMCI and just like that, the order was submitted and it was filled immediately. So it's pretty cool how you can control your Robinhood account right from this view. So that's how you buy a stock, but let's say you now want to close a position. Let's say I want to lock in that profit here on Tesla. What you would do at this point is click on the close button and it brings up details here to close your position. We're gonna do a market sell. We're gonna sell in shares or we're actually gonna sell here in dollars and we're gonna sell the entire amount. I have 121 available. At that point, you would just click on the sell Tesla button. And if you wanted to change this, you could sell in shares or dollars. You can also do all sorts of different market types if you wanted to do a limit order, for example. But we're just going to do a dollar sell off of 121, click on sell Tesla. And it said the market order failed, not enough to sell. So I think for example, we might actually have to click on close and leave it at maybe the dollar value being a dollar 20. So now it should close because it's showing a dollar 21 available. And at that point, it did fill for us. So we just sold off $1.20 worth of Tesla through Robinhood Legend. You can also customize these columns up here if you want specific data, you would go up here and use customized columns. So let's say for example, you don't want the one day P&L, that simplifies the view here. And let's say you also want to look at other details. You can add, let's say asset type for example. And now that adds the type of asset here to that column and you can also make these wider or narrower if you want to for any particular reason. The next widget we're gonna add here is the options chain. Now I'm not an options trader, so I don't have much of any useful information here as to what this shows you, but you can add this here and take a look at that view if you want to as well. The final widget we're gonna add here is a chart. So we're gonna click on chart and that's going to add a chart here at the bottom right. And by default, it's going to show us whatever we were looking at previously, or in this case, since we deleted all of our reviews, it's just going to show us Apple. Now, one thing that's pretty cool here that I wanna show you is you can have groupings going on here where it's going to change that data set. If you change one of them, it changes them both. So for example, you notice how this is blue and this is blue. It means these are grouped together. So if you change one of these, it's going to change it for both. So if you click here on Apple and let's say you change that over to Tesla, it also changed that over here for my options data on Tesla stock automatically. And as far as the template goes, it's going to be saved by default. So if you close it out, you're going to be able to view it again as soon as you open up a Robinhood legend again. And you can make as many of these as you want by clicking on the plus icon and either adding new templates from scratch or using their existing templates here. That's going to wrap things up for this video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you made it to the end, make sure you drop a like on this for the YouTube algorithm. Robinhood said they're going to be rolling out new features over time for Robinhood Legend, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for future updates on this platform. Don't forget to visit ryanoscribner.com slash Robinhood or use my affiliate link down below to get that free stock worth up to $200 when you open a new Robinhood account today. You can click below to watch my full Robinhood app tutorial for beginners, and I hope to see you there.